feels so small. I need to get <laughs> another pillow. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I wanted to do something pretty different than anything I've done before. So I decided to dress as my favorite TV and movie characters for an entire week. I wanted to analyze my favorite characters' costumes, kind of get a feel for the history of the costumes and why they were chosen, what they were based upon. So I did a lot of research for this video and learned a ton while making it. I was also kind of forced to step out of my comfort zone. A lot of this stuff is not clothes that I would normally wear. I picked five different characters um, and dressed up as them throughout four days. One of the days I was too lazy to do anything so I skipped that day and Sunday was a double whammy but you'll see that later on. So if you're interested in fashion history or costume design things like that or if I know you and I forced you to watch this video or if you're my teacher and you're obligated to watch this video then please keep watching and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So on Friday I decided to dress as Lara Jean from To All the Boys I've Loved Before. It's actually the perfect length to watch on an airplane flight from Utah to California so I usually watch it on the airplane. <laughs> When I first saw this movie, immediately what stood out to me was how fashionable Lara Jean was. Here's a little synopsis of the movie, just in case you haven't seen it. When she was younger, she wrote love letters to all of her crushes, but never sent them out. Now, in high school, her little sister sends out the letters without her knowing. Throughout the movie, her crushes confront her one by one about the love letters. Lara Jean kind of lives in her own head. Even the opening scene of the movie starts out with Lara Jean running through an open field, running towards her crush in this beautiful red gown until a pillow smacks her in the face and we're brought back to reality. Lara Jean is actually alone in her room reading a romance novel. Scenes like this are very important in the film because they help us recognize her obsession with 80s era films focused around romance, like Clueless and Sixteen Candles. The costume designer for the film has also said that she wanted to pay homage to the 60s, 70s, and 80s. She looked to celebrities like Claire Danes and Winona Ryder in the 90s, specifically for their use of textures. In the movie, Lara Jean is seen wearing various textiles like knits, lace, denim, and cargo and utility clothing. These textures and styles also became popular again in 2018 when the movie was filmed, so it's realistic that a high school student would be wearing things like this. Something to remember is that while Lara Jean is very mature for her age, she's still very naive. We see her youthful and romantic side represented in her clothing by the use of things like lace, Peter Pan collars, and knee-high socks. Lara Jean is often seen wearing fit and flare or a-line style dresses, which are probably just based on the actress's body type and what looks good on her, but I have my own theory about that. A fitted torso that flared out at the waist became popular in the 1950s, when women observed strict gender roles and were primarily housewives. In a sense, these silhouettes remind us that Lara Jean is conforming to these gender roles, especially since most of the movie is based on her journey with budding romance. We know that her mother is no longer alive, and we see her taking on a maternal role as she's nurturing to her sisters throughout the movie. But she's also literally seen in the kitchen wearing an apron baking cookies for her sister's bake sale. So that's just my theory that the 50s kind of fit and flare silhouette represents that side of Lara Jean. Maybe it really was just about what looked good on the actress's body type. <laughs> Lara Jean's overall style is preppy, cute, but a little bit funky. Lara Jean is bold and brave, and her outfits convey this throughout the movie. In the background of the film, we can see students roaming the halls wearing t-shirts, sweatshirts, jeans, tennis shoes, things that might be more appropriate for high school students. But Lara Jean is always bright and colorful and stands out against the crowd, which is perfect for her personality type. All of these outfits looked so fun to recreate, so I had a lot of trouble picking just one. Oh my gosh, I've had pepper in my teeth this whole time. Anyway, yeah, I ended up picking this outfit right here. I think this outfit is one of the most important in the film. Her ex-best friend makes fun of her platform combat boots, 
while she's clad in Ugg boots and skinny jeans. Yet again, showing us that Laura Jean is different from her peers. This outfit is also worn the first time we're introduced to Peter Kavinsky, a relatively important character. For this outfit, I thrifted a green plaid shirt, layered it over a gray crop top, and tied it up at the waist. In the movie, she's wearing shorts, but it's around 40 degrees in Utah, so I opted for a long cargo style pant, which was already in my closet. I didn't have maroon socks, so I wore gray ones to match my shirt and threw on some platform black boots similar to hers. Her hair ribbon is very significant in the film. I honestly don't know why I didn't tie a ribbon in my hair, because I do have one, but I just went with a maroon colored scrunchie to pay homage to her maroon socks. I'm going to insert some footage I took throughout the day while I was dressed as large. Jean. So that's gonna be my outfit for Laura Jean today. I don't know if anyone will like catch on that I'm dressed as her just because I feel like this is something a lot of people would wear. This one is fun. It's not too far out of my comfort zone. I am a little bit nervous about the cropped top and it's different from what I normally wear. So I'm gonna head to campus and I'll try to get some footage at school. In honor of stepping out of my comfort zone this week, I thought it'd be cool to listen to the music from the soundtrack. Who do you think I'm dressed as today? Hmm. It's a Netflix movie. Is it like a teen movie? Yeah. I've only watched All the Boys of Love one and half of two. You're kidding! You Is it for two? No, it's the first one. It looks good. I like it. What do you think of my outfit? I think. Do you want to see the full thing? Oh, really? Love the jump boots. Thank you. Stop filming me. Lara Jean was my first character that I dressed up as. I actually didn't mind this one too much. I think I noticed quite a few people looking at my outfit. I don't know if it's because it looked good or I looked uncomfortable <laughs> wearing it. And I actually really liked the way that the outfit turned out. So as I said earlier, I decided to skip Wednesday. I was up super late Friday night and Saturday was one of those days where you just do the bare minimum and that's about it. On Sunday, I decided to dress as two characters. I had to choose someone from a Wes Anderson film. He's like my all-time favorite director. And I decided to go with Margot from The Royal Tenenbaums. His film style is absurdist, ironic, and whimsical, which translates perfectly into the costumes that the characters wear. Most of the costumes are handmade pieces, which I feel adds to the peculiarity of his style. It really adds to the quirkiness of his characters. His costumes have always been very eye-catching and they've sparked a lot of creativity in the fashion world. He often collaborates with designers to make specific pieces for his characters, like Margot Tenenbaum's mink coat, which I'll touch on later in the video. In the 2015 fashion season, the Royal Tenenbaums kind of took over the runway. Gucci showcased outfits that closely resembled Margot's character, Lacoste revamped Richie's athletic look, and Bali featured monochromatic tracksuits that closely resembled Chaz's attire. Something that I love about Wes Anderson's costuming is that every character only wears one or two costumes throughout the film. It kind of reminds me of watching cartoons as a kid. To me, it shows consistency for the character, and when an outfit change takes place, it's usually a defining moment in the film. Margot is the adopted daughter of the Tenenbaum family. She's a genius and uniquely talented in literature. Literature. But she's also a little bit romantically confused. She's married, but she's having an affair with her brother Richie's best friend. Oh, and she's also in love with Richie, but she's adopted, so don't freak out. She chain smokes to cope with her life, and she has this rugged, I don't give a fuck attitude. I don't believe it's said where or when the film takes place, but from my research, I learned that it's probably set in New York, where the movie was filmed, in the 1970s. Fashion in the 70s coincided with the hippie movement, which was all about rejecting mainstream American life. Things like bell bottoms, tie-dye, and pleasant Pleasant. <laughs> Peasant blouses were popular because they contradicted everything that was considered appropriate attire. It's also important to note that the characters wear the same outfits that are depicted when they are younger, which means Margot would have formed her style in the 1960s. Although Margot doesn't wear trends that represent the era necessarily, 
Her rebellion is shown through her attire. The costume designer for the film wanted to showcase Margot's internal struggles. Margot wears a mink duster coat, varying colors of striped polo dresses, and a red hair clip in her hair. The coat, which was designed specifically for the movie by Fendi, was inspired by an old Peter Sellers film where a girl runs around New York wearing a fur coat. I also thought it was interesting and worth mentioning that during this time period, Lacoste only made solid colored polo dresses. So the costume designer had to create a striped fabric that matched the era and get permission from Lacoste to put their logo on the dress. Margot's outfit is contradictory because she's edgy and sexually promiscuous, but she dresses conservatively and preppy. This type of juxtaposition is what makes her character so interesting. For my outfit, I wanted to stay as close to the character as possible. I can't even close to afford a fur coat, so I opted for this camel colored coat that gives a similar dressed up vibe. I also thrifted an almost perfect striped polo dress. This one is Ralph Lauren, not Lacoste, but you get the point. I pinned a section of my hair back with a red hair clip and threw on some tall lace socks because it was snowing outside and I was freezing. This day I pretty much just stayed home and did homework. It was Sunday and everything is closed in Utah so there really wasn't much to do. Here's some of my footage as my half day as Margot Tenenbaum. I've literally been doing homework <laughs> for like six hours I've been doing homework. I also realized that I have relatively no footage in my Margot costume. I'm just wasting away this really, really good Margot outfit. So I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna take the BuzzFeed quiz. What Wes Anderson character are you? Oh, it's actually which Wes Anderson movie are you? Okay, here we go. Which Royal Tenenbaum character would you want to hang out with? I have to say Margot, right? Because I am Margo. What's one thing you would take if you were running away? Probably music, so I'm gonna say my record player and a movie record. Which time period do you think you belong in? I think I would say the 60s, mostly because of Mad Men. I got the Grand Budapest Hotel. Ta da! Cool. I think stuff like this is not really in style anymore. I don't even know that it was in style when Margo was wearing it. I think that I would wear this with some sneakers during the summertime. So that was my day as Margo Tenenbaum. The second half of Sunday, I felt like I had to do an outfit from the show Mad Men. I recently watched this show for the first time and man, that is just really good television. If you haven't seen it, it's a period show set in 1960s New York. Mad Men was a nickname for the advertising men that worked on Madison Avenue during the height of the advertising era in the 1950s. The fashion in this show is really special because the first episode is set in 1960 and the last episode is set in 1969, which gives us a full decade of fashions to look at, which is so, so, so cool to see. There's a lot of strong female characters in the show. Ultimately, I felt like Megan's style was the most relatable to me. To me, she really embodied what it was like being a young woman in the 1960s. So Megan is introduced in the show as a secretary. She later goes on to marry Donald Draper, who is the head honcho, the main man, the star of the show. We get to see kind of a chameleon effect through Megan's wardrobe as she goes from secretary to copywriter to housewife to successful actress which is super cool to see. The 1960s was a really fun time in fashion. It borrowed popular trends from the 1950s and mixed it with the emerging styles of the 70s. Fashion trends in the 60s included bright colors and prints, including plaid, layering collared shirts, menswear, and straight silhouettes. Pointed shirt collars pointed to a thin and slender neck, and straight silhouettes gave off a boxy appearance. Basically, the goal was to look as much like a stick as possible, hence the popular model at the time, Twiggy. Megan's style was called mod, which was a modern subculture created in London in the 1960s. Mod clothing featured tailored silhouettes and bright prints and colors. The costume designer for the show has said that she wanted color to represent the relationships between different characters. Oftentimes, the characters are seen wearing complementary colors when they are in harmony, like this picture of Megan wearing a blue sweater and Dawn wearing a matching blue tie. Vice versa, the characters are seen wearing clashing colors when there's friction between 
between them. People have emotional responses to color, so these details help add to the story, whether the audience notices or not. For this video, I went for an outfit that stood out to me a couple of times throughout the show, and that's this one right here. A version of this outfit is worn in this scene where Megan is having a conversation with their neighbor, Sylvia. Not to give too much away about the show, but there is some contention between these two characters. Megan is confiding in Sylvia about her recent miscarriage. Sylvia is wearing a light blue, age-appropriate sweater skirt set, while Megan is just a little bit more trendy with the plaid pants and the pointed collars and things like that. Opposite colors, silhouettes, and patterns all help to support the fact that they themselves are opposites. For Megan, I wore a thrifted white button-down with pointed collars, and layered it underneath a dark green knit sweater, which I already owned. I tucked these into a pair of plaid pants that I already had as well. In the 60s, this would have been untucked for a more straight fit, but I live in 2020 and everything that I own is oversized, so I had to tuck it in to give it just a little bit more of a feminine shape. And with that, I'm Megan Draper. Like I said, this was the day that I split it into two, so I spent most of the night as Megan, and this is some of the footage that I got throughout the evening. So I thought I'd do something very Megan Draper-esque and I'm gonna cook dinner for my husband. <laughs> I don't like cooking, I don't do it very often, but I'm gonna channel my inner late 60s, early 70s housewife. He's on his way home now, so I'm just gonna get started doing it in my outfit. I just found an album called Mad Men on the Rock music from the television series. So that's what I'll be listening to while I'm cooking. So yes, Megan Draper shops at Target. The secret is out. What day? This. On Monday, so on Monday I decided to choose a newer show that I have just recently become obsessed with and that's Sabrina Spellman from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's scary man, it's scary and you see the devil in it, there's witches and magic and all kinds of shit like that. I've been obsessed with this show and even more obsessed with the clothes that Sabrina wears. She's the perfect combination of chic and witchy and everything that I want to be. Kiernan Shipka, who actually is Don Draper's daughter on Mad Men, she plays Sabrina Spellman in the show. Sabrina's a high school student who is half witch and half mortal and is basically faced with this choice of choosing between the mortal world with her friends or the witch world with her family. The show includes a lot of horror, occult, and witchcraft and has even been described as the vein of Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. The costume designer for the show said that he was influenced by the 1960s and this feeling of what did he say? Timeless America feeling, whatever that means. The show is set in modern day, but it's obviously a little bit different than your typical high school fashions. The designer wanted to encourage a feeling of an eternal autumn, so he dresses the characters in a lot of colors like browns, greens, oranges, things like that. Sabrina is usually the only one seen wearing bold colors like gold and her staple red coat. Throughout history, witches have been depicted in a lot of different ways. Primarily when people think of witches, they think pointy black hats and black robe, dress, long, pointy boots, things like that. And that actually started as a reference from a description of the devil during the Salem witch trials. He was described as a tall dark man in a high crowned hat. This look was further supported by, of course, the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz, when actually the traditional attire of witches is believed to be nudity, which we see in the 2015 film The Witch. Scary as hell. Don't watch it. But like, watch it, but don't watch it. Through the decades, variations on witch attire have been worn in movies like Hocus Pocus and Bewitched, but the one thing they all have in common is the color black. And Sabrina does this in the show as well. She incorporates a lot of black into her wardrobe in things like black knee-high socks, 
pinafore dresses and leather jackets. I like the fact that you could look at Sabrina and think she's just a normal high school girl. Her style's just a little bit more edgy than her peers. I decided to come up with my own outfit based on the color scheme, textures, and silhouettes that are often seen in the show, but I loosely based my outfit off of this one here. I loved the pinafore dress that Sabrina's wearing. I think it's the perfect nod to the fact that she's still young, but it kind of gives us a darkness within her character as well. For this look, I wore a rust orange mock neck top that has these awesome bell sleeves that really made me feel like a witch. I layered it under this black pinafore style jumpsuit that I thrifted and I paired it with the same black platform boots that I wore for Lara Jean. Sabrina wears a locket that her boyfriend gave her, so I just wore this medallion necklace that gives off a similar vibe. I think that this was my favorite outfit. I say that hesitantly because I actually really enjoyed wearing every single one of these outfits. I don't know, I just felt really powerful and and like witch-like in this costume. A couple of my friends actually guessed who I was. I'm gonna insert the footage from the day here. What do you think of my outfit today? Did you know I was gonna ask you that? I didn't, no. Oh. It feels like Halloween. Oh, really? Orange, black, overalls, kind of like a witch's gown. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's kind of witchy. I'm dressing as my favorite TV and movie character. Today, you're a witch. Do you know who? Sabrina the Teenage? Yeah, how did you know that? Oh, the TV show. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, good the, job. Yeah, from, uh, Mad Men. yeah. Who do you think I'm dressed as? You're dressed as? I don't want to say what I want to say because you might take it the wrong way. Say it. If I were to walk through Provo, I could probably find like five people dressed like this. Let's I disagree with that 100% because I walked through Provo today and no one was dressed like this. Oh. It's a character. A character? What vibes does it give you? Chill vibes. Chill vibes? <laughs> don't. I'm not Say saying. it! Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Yeah, nice. That was hard. So that was my day as Sabrina. I'm definitely gonna wear this jumpsuit again. I think this costume was a huge success. For Tuesday's outfit, I had to do a classic 90s look, so I decided to go with Rachel Green. Probably the biggest television fashion icon of the 90s. What's lucky for me is the 90s are kind of back in style, so a lot of this stuff I already had in my closet. Everyone probably knows Rachel appears on Friends as a wealthy girl who falls upon hard times aka her dad cuts her off from her trust fund. Rachel is then forced to rely on her new friends, friends because the show is called Friends. She's forced to rely on her new friends for support. Rachel eventually goes on to get some really cool jobs in the fashion industry which really shows through her wardrobe. 90s and 2000s era fashion just speaks to me. I was born in 1995 which was just one year after this show aired and ever since I was a little girl I have loved putting outfits together. I used to watch TV and then run to my room and try to replicate the outfits that the characters were wearing. Even at the age of seven, I was looking at Rachel Green and just thinking I can't wait to dress like that someday. Some people say that the 90s gave us some of the biggest moments in fashion history. This could be because some historians consider the 90s to be the beginning of modern society. This was also the rise of boy bands, pop stars, and girl power. From my research, I learned that there were three main groups of fashion styles in the 90s. Minimalistic, elegant fashion featured mild color palettes and materials like silk and velvet. Trends in this category were slip dresses, spandex leggings, and leather jackets. With the rise of R&B, street style also became very popular. It featured the opposite, oversized, sporty, and colorful with graphic prints. This was also the first time that sneakers gained status in the fashion world. And the third popular trend was the schoolgirl look. Think Cher in Clueless and Britney Spears' Hit Me Baby One More Time. Crop tops, mini skirts, plaid, and knee-high socks were used to accomplish this look. I also have to shout out Winona Ryder. I think she was everyone's it girl in the 1990s. She really embodies like 1990s grunge, which I think is just one of my favorite trends throughout all of fashion history. I also think that some of her red carpet looks resemble some of Rachel's more 
sleek, elegant looks that she wears in the show. Even though Rachel follows popular trends, she was also considered a trendsetter, and many people look to her character for outfit inspiration. The most common trends I see in Rachel's wardrobe are sleek mini or slip dresses, patterned skirts, and turtleneck tops. Oh, and lots of tights. She wears tights a lot. She also tends to stick to milder color schemes with lots of white, beige, and black, and pops of red and navy. The look that I chose was actually inspired by a mix of these two outfits. I already owned this white sweater, and I tucked it into these plaid shorts that I thrifted for $4. I layered tights under the shorts and wore my chunky platform boots once again. I feel like this outfit perfectly combined the colors of the first outfit with the style of the second one. Here's some of my footage from the day as Rachel. Someone complimented me on my outfit today at school, which was really nice. I thought about asking her if she knew who I was dressed as, but I have social anxiety, so I didn't. <laughs> but I did put a question thingy on my Instagram story, and I asked people if they could figure out who I was dressed as. This one wasn't too far off from something that I would normally wear, but for some reason it was also the most recognizable look. It was really cool to post it on my story and to get so many responses. That's my footage from the day as Rachel. My last look was on Wednesday, and I don't really expect anyone to know who this character is. But with that said, I am here to say, if you have not seen Jojo Rabbit, please go watch it. Oh my gosh. The costuming in this movie had a similar feel to Wes Anderson's for me in the same way that it's also whimsical and ironic and his costume style has that same kind of homemade-y feel to it that Wes Anderson's has. So for this outfit, I'm going to be Rosie Betzler. I'll give a quick overview of the film in case no one's seen it without giving too much away. It's set in Nazi Germany during the last year of World War II. Jojo is a German boy who discovers that his mom Rosie Betzler, who I'm going to be dressing as, is hiding a Jewish girl in their attic. Jojo is forced to confront his blind nationalism with the help of his imaginary friend, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I just want to put a disclaimer that I don't think Nazis are funny, I don't think Hitler is funny. It's comical really, um, the way that they depict Hitler. Something that this movie does is makes you realize that hate is taught and and I think that was the point of the film. Don't come for me because I'm laughing about Hitler, please. This might be a tiny bit of a spoiler, but this is important to her outfit, so I'm gonna include it in this video. Rosie is a single mother who also opposes the Nazi party while her son is obsessed with it. Like I said, the film is set at the end of World War II in Germany, so that makes the year 1945. While it does seem a little insignificant to talk about fashion during one of the most tragic times in all of world history, that's what this video is about, and I actually learned some really cool things about the influence the war had on the clothing at the time. The German invasion of Poland in 1939 set the tone for everything that happened during the next decade. Fashion follows social trends and world events, so World War II actually changed clothing and styles at the time. Materials had to be rationed, and people actually received coupon books in order to purchase clothes. This meant that most likely styles from the 1930s remained popular into the 40s out of pure necessity. Women were excluded from political life for the most part, but the war started to have an influence on the emerging fashions, and military silhouettes started to become popular in the rest of the world. Women began to wear boxier items like jumpsuits, blazers, and straight skirts. Rosie is very stylish in the film, and it would seem by what she wears that she's able to live a more generous life than some of the people around her. She was generally seen wearing pants in the film, which was actually frowned upon by the Nazi party as pants were derived from French fashions. The costume designer has said that Rosie was part of an intellectual and artistic elite from that era. So much of the movie takes place in the Betzler's Art Deco style home, and they wanted the fashions to represent this as well. There were a lot of avant-garde movements during the war, so it was a combination of these elements that helped make her costume. They purposefully made Rosie's outfits so different from anyone else's in the films 
because she herself was different. So even though her styles may not be completely historically accurate, they do represent who she is as a character and what she stands for. She's often seen wearing bright greens, blues, and reds. Her sweaters also usually have unusual shapes or stripes. Her clothing invokes a playful feeling, which I really tried to implement into my outfit. I looked everywhere for a vintage -y sweater like this one, and sadly, I couldn't find anything close to it. I was able to find this striped shirt with similar colors. Every one of her shirts has a collar on it, and I really feel like it added to that 30s 40s era vibe so i actually made a really janky peter pan collar out of some scrap fabric that i had and i just hot glued it to the shirt she wears a gold necklace that peeks out from under the collar so i did this with my coin necklace rosie's shoes are very important to her character and to the story but if rosie's costume wasn't historically accurate then mine doesn't have to be either right i wore these flat mule slides because they're the only shoes that i own besides doc martens and sneakers and and now I'm Rosie Betzler. Here's some of the footage that I got from the day. Who am I dressed as? Susie? No. You made this? Yeah. <laughs> Rosie Betzler. Rosie Betzler. This one was the most costumey for me, I think because I hot glued a Peter Pan collar onto my shirt. I don't feel like I stuck out very much. People didn't even give me a second look. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had tons of fun doing this video. It was able to push me out of my comfort zone a little bit, let me experience some new types of fashion, and I also learned a lot about the character's outfits which was my goal in making this video. I hope you guys found it informative and I hope you enjoyed it. I have a lot of favorite characters, so I would really like to do this video again. If you guys have any suggestions of who I should dress as next time, then please comment down below. If you're interested in videos like this and you want to see more fashion related things, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.